Well, good morning and welcome once again to Ed's Orchids. Now, I've just been looking at a few plants and I've come across this one that I'm not really happy with. And this is a cross between, let's have a look, Paphiopedlum parishii and Paphiopedlum prystens. Uh, I've just taken it out of the pot. You can see the root growth here. They're all hard, I think there's one soft one that's going to come out, but it's been in this very fine bark. And uh, I only watered it a couple of days ago and it's still wet through. So what I propose to do with this is put it back in the same pot because that one's alright for it. It's an 11 centimetre pot so that's fine. I can't put it in a much smaller pot because the uh, the plants will be sort of top heavy. So what I propose to do, I'm going to put this in some different bark with a bit of perlite, some larger bark with perlite and uh, want to see how it goes on from there. Now the only trouble with this plant is that it's, uh, as I say, it's a cross between Parishii, which comes from uh, Borneo and uh, well, it out into the Far East and uh, price stands, which comes from New Guinea. Now you read a lot of things about these two plants and uh, anyhow, I'll just go into it. The Parishii grows on uh, large tree branches and uh, is an epiphyte, whereas the uh, price stand grows on calcareous rocks. So how do you combine the two? One wants uh, acidic conditions, the other wants uh, alkaline conditions. Now I've just taken this out of its pot because I was just looking at them and there's one or two leaves being cracked and falling over so I'm going to take those off like these. But they've both got two new growths on each on, the, on each of the two growths. Uh, the roots aren't very good, although they are all hard apart from that one, which I'll just take off. That's gone. Everything else is hard. Um, I kept them in a small uh, growing medium of, uh, it's a mixture of uh, small perlite, coconut husk, uh, and bark and I think it kept it far too wet so what I propose to do I'm going to use the same pot which is an 11 centimeter pot it's got holes drilled around it, it needs a washing out first and then I'm going to put it in a much larger bark I'm going to put some uh, larger pieces down at the bottom as well of pebbles or something like that just to make sure the air flows go through it and uh, then we'll see what we can do from there. But, uh, you see, when you read up about these, the Parishii, uh, as far as temperatures go, they say it's, uh, one of them said it's cold to cool growing. Now, coming from Borneo, that sounds a bit, uh, a bit strange, doesn't it? And... Uh, the price then is a uh, intermediate grower. So you combine them where they grow together. So, you know, what do you give them? So we have a quandary, haven't we, on these, these plants. We've got uh, one that's like high temperatures, up to 30 degrees, and it likes minimum temperatures of 20 degrees. The other one, likes a high of 24 and a low of 8 centigrade. One likes acidic conditions, the other one likes acid conditions. So there's only one thing to do when you're growing things like this, is grow them in intermediate temperatures and try and grow them in a neutral pH. And I think that's about the only thing you can do. So we'll just tidy this one up before we uh, before we repot it, take all the uh, 
bad roots off. I think they were just one that I pulled off. There's no more bad roots there. But we'll take these leaves off that are flopping all over the place. Makes it look much nicer. I can't afford to take these leaves off yet, I don't think. Because they're not dying enough. So we'll have to leave the long leaves on. And I'm presuming this will get a, quite a big plant if I can get it going properly. I've had it since it was a small plant, but... Uh, I've never really bothered with it, but uh, I've decided to bother a bit with it now, just to see what we can do. Take that off there. Well, here are the roots on this plant, and uh, I've just noticed, if you look down here, you can see, I think it's part of a new growth of a leaf, of a root. Yep. Oh, that's good. So I'm going to take it out of the stuff it was in, the small stuff, and I put it in something a little bit larger. Now you can see there's a new growth coming up there. And I thought I saw another right down the middle of the plant, right in the middle. See if we can get down there. Yeah, just a little one there coming up. Right, so we've chopped a few leaves off this, so, uh, well, not the complete leaf, just half a leaf where they were sort of uh, broken. And uh, we'll get some uh, nice new bark here, a lot larger, larger perlite, and uh, we'll pot it up. Well, this is the new bark I'm going to put in. There's uh, various sizes, a lot larger than the uh, the stuff that I've just got it out of. And there's perlite. So I'm trying to give it a 50-50, as near as I can tell, of uh, equal parts of it. So we'll see how that goes. I don't think I can mix this together like it is because all the perlite will uh, have just joined with the perlite and not mix with the wood. So I think the best thing to do is put... Uh, a little bit of wood in the pot, a bit of perlite, and then start banging the pot so it'll all, uh, it'll all mix up then that way instead of mixing it here on the table. The problem with these and not having the long leaves is uh, it's putting them in the pot in the right position because the leaves are always touching something and pushing them one way but I want to get it right into the middle. So I'll do this quite... Uh, quite slowly to make sure that when I bang the pot it doesn't start moving all over the place. A bit of perlite in as well. Not easy. Not easy to get it as you want it. And we've got to mind the new growth. I'll put a bit of right in now. in the middle. I'm sorry if I'm covering everything up by my hand but uh, it's just that I've got to do this. I think we've got it into the right place now. The perlite will go into all the gaps when I tap the pot. Hopefully. I'm 
something different I want to do with this as regards feeding. Instead of using all the chemical foods, I'm going to use fish blood and bone, which is a natural organic uh, uh, fertiliser. Interesting to keep an eye on this one. Because I don't think they've got a, a proper name for this hybrid. It's just classed as a, as a Parisia. I cross price stands. But price stands, as you know, has now been reclassified as a Glandu, glandu, glandufer oleum, something like that. You know. Now that's looking very good to me. That is looking okay to me. to see how that goes on. Uh, the roots, as I said, I watered them yesterday, they're quite uh, quite wet, so I won't water them again today, although the drying material, the material they've just gone in, will dry it up very quickly, so tomorrow will be a nice time to re-water. Right, we've got this potted up one now, and I'm very, very pleased the way it's gone. You can see everything's mixed together. There's plenty of air in the pot. It'll hold a certain amount of water, which is good. And uh, it should be good from then on. But what I propose to do with this is fertilise it differently. You know, I'm using uh, calcium nitrate, magnesium sulphate, and, and there's a lot of chemicals in it as well. So I'm going to use some uh, organic fertiliser. What I'm going to try on this one is a bit of fish, blood and bone. And uh, I mean it works on the uh, Phragmopediums, excuse me, so uh, I don't see why it can't be alright for this one. Well that's about all for now so thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you to uh, all my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I, uh, bit, I would appreciate it if you did so. So thank you once again for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.